Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I've left corporate and I've been a freelance designer for about two and a half-ish months now and I realized I haven't been designing anything for fun yet. So here's what we're doing today. I'll be walking you through how I designed this cozy book app from start to finish. I also wanted to take you along my day. Okay, so I've got this really quick client call that I'm about to take and after that, I'll give you a little bit more context about this app. Just finished the client call and I wanted to give you a quick backstory for the app. So my friend Arusha and I like to recommend books to each other. We have similar tastes in books, but we always end up reading them at different times. So we were talking about it and we wanted a better, more aesthetic, more personalized experience when recommending books to each other. And Arusha is also a software engineer, so I thought this would be a really cool side project for us to work on. And that's where this idea started. So I decided on the name Kuma for the book app, and it's one of Luna's very, very many nicknames that we have for her. I originally had a document with a bunch of book-related names that I have for the app, but I decided on Kuma just because it's more fun and it's more personal and I have a special meaning behind it. And Kuma also means bear in Japanese and bears like teddy bears are super cozy. Reading is another one of my favorite hobbies. So I had a lot of fun designing this app since it's something that I'm interested in and it's fixing a real life problem that I'm actually facing. So this whole process of designing took about two-ish weeks from concept to prototype since it was a way for me to practice getting back into design after six years of software engineering. I figured it would be a great way to see what new resources were out there, how the tools have improved and also to have a project to add to my personal design portfolio. So that's some context into the project. I'm gonna head to the gym now with Christian and I'll meet y'all back here to talk about competitor analysis. Alright, so this is usually the first step that I like to take when I'm working on a new product or a new feature, and that is competitor analysis. Um, I think this is very, very important to see what's on the market, see what's there, what's not there, how you can fill in the gaps. And let me just show you how I go through this process. Okay, so as you can see here, the first thing I like to do is write down a list of features that I want my app to have. This is just like a dream app, so I just write down everything that I can think of. This will be kind of a brain dump for me for this app. Then I do a lot of competitor research. It's usually best to have like two to three apps for you to research so that you don't overwhelm yourself. But I chose around five apps to research because I just really wanted to get into it. I don't really recommend doing five apps because again, you can overwhelm yourself and there might be too many features that you're thinking about. The main point of this is to see what's out there on the market already, see what the apps are very, very good at, see what the apps don't have, and see if there are any gaps that I can fill in the market as well. As you can see here, the main competitors I chose were Tome, Goodreads, Storygraph, Fable, and Oku. Also, all of these notes I compiled through the App Store. And these are just some notes that I made for myself I just wanted to use these apps a little bit to get more experience with them, see how their UX was, and see what their key features were. Here are some screenshots that I took. I'm pretty sure these are all from the App Store as well. And I basically took a screenshot of all of this and consolidated it in my Figma because I really like it when everything is in one place. So yeah, these are the competitor screenshots. After all of the competitor research and looking at all the features that I want to include in my dream book app, I start figuring out the actual features that I want. And then after that, I figure out the MVP features that are more feasible. I'm sure as we engineer this out and code this out, the MVP feature list will be even smaller. But as a first prototype, I just wanted to include a little bit more. This isn't really the neatest way for me to organize everything, but I do like to see everything in one place in case I think of something in the future as I'm designing and I need to reference everything very quickly. So that's why you just see a bunch of text on this section. I promise it'll get more interesting later on. So now we're gonna head to a coffee shop and we'll see if we can film in there, but I'll be talking about wireframing next. All right, let's talk wireframes. This is where my software engineering background really comes in handy since I'm not thinking about just what looks good. I'm also thinking about the data structure, API calls, and what's actually feasible in terms of development. I like to divide out the app into main flows and start from there. Then I think of the main home screen. 
could try to polish that up in terms of UX to make sure a user would know what to do upon load and not be too confused. I really want to think about the MVP so that I don't overwhelm myself. We're thinking about what is the least we can build that still solves the problem and hits the main core features of the app. I also really like to go and see what other apps are doing at this stage to see how other apps may lay out their screens or have a certain flow. There weren't too many examples since there's not too many book apps out there, but that's why it's important to get creative. I took a few screenshots and consolidated them here so I can have them for easy reference. A lot of these screenshots are also from competitor apps as well. There's also screenshots of some specific UI components such as social media as aspects and social media posts that I had to think about for this app. You can see the main flows here. Firstly, the main book screen where you can see your library, current read, collections, and reviews. Then I go through the flow of what the users would go through. Now we're looking at the feed screen with your groups, friends post, and explore page. I also wanted to see what it would look like with color to make sure it wouldn't look too busy. Lastly, we have your profile screen and that shows everything about you as a reader and also your bookmarks of saved posts. There's also, of course, the settings page. I haven't wireframed out every single screen, but just the main ones to get started. Otherwise, we would also have to think about empty states, error states, and small interactions within the app as well. It's important to only use gray boxes, and if you can help it, just filler text so that you're not really thinking about the UI design yet. You're just thinking about where the things are laid out for now. Sometimes I just do the UX boxes myself, or I like to use a wireframer kit from Figma Community, which really helps speed things up when I'm on client projects. I cannot stress enough how important the wireframing process is before we get into the UI design. When people think of product design, they usually forget about the foundation and the UX of the product that usually makes or breaks the app, rather than the pretty colors and fonts. So it's important to really spend your your time on this and get it right so that one you don't have to start from scratch when you realize something doesn't make sense and two you don't spend all your time designing and making something look pretty when it doesn't work in the first place all right so we're gonna head out now and go grab some dinner we'll see you back at the apartment and i can go over the branding and the ui design All right, we're almost there, so let's make this pretty. So first I wanted to start with some branding. I like to create a lot of mood boards, so the first one I made was just the vibe of the app. I went on Pinterest and went down a rabbit hole of some cozy book nook scenery and things that would make me feel calm, naturey, and enjoyable to look at. I noticed that I was gravitating towards a lot of blues, greens, and yellows, and from there I went and grabbed some inspiration for branding. A bunch of this is from Canva, but also Pinterest, Dripple, Twitter, and some other random inspiration websites. I also went on Color Hunt to grab some color combinations that just look good to me. And then from there, I refined and chose some good ones that would work really well with this book app. After I had a sense of the colors, I moved on to typography. And again, I went on Canva to get some inspiration and found a bunch of different font options. I think I spent way too much time on this, but I was having a lot of fun, so. That's okay. I started with the branding logo font, and then after that I moved on to the fonts that I would use inside the app, such as the display font and then the normal text font. As you can see here, there's a bunch of options that I was looking at. There's serif and non-serif, and some handwriting fonts. These are the fonts for the actual app. Over here, I was finalizing the logo of the app. I had a couple options here, and I went with this one. I asked Christian what he thought about it, and he said the K looked like a T, so then I changed the K a little bit to look more like a K. Here are the final options. These are just some color options. It's super subtle, but the background of these logos are a different white cream color so i was experimenting with that there here you can see all of the different display font options i was trying a bunch of them out just on the wireframes and these are the display font options that i was trying to go through same thing here for the interface font options i wanted something more readable but i also wanted something that matched the vibe of the app and i ultimately went with mulish here you can see i created some more mood boards for the color and the ui of the app here's the colors here's the ui and ultimately these are the final screens of the app you can see some UI iterations I had here that I was debating on, and again, I got some feedback from this and settled on this one as the final one. And some more options here. It's really cool to see how these designs change over time. This first one looked really outdated to me, but that was the first iteration that I had. Then I wanted to make it look more sky-like. Honestly, I do like both of these last two options, but I ultimately chose this one since it was a little bit easier to read. I also love seeing how we go from wireframe to final design. These are some examples here. I also love creating components when I make my screens so that I don't have to do quadrillion times the work when I have to go change one small component. And I also like to create a typography and color library in my Figma so that I can quickly refer to it and then make sure everything is consistent. This is something that I learned in corporate and I'm really, really grateful for that. I also did a little bit of explorations on ChatGPT. I wanted to see what the Kuma logo would look like 3D and I wanted to see some book options as well. There's also a couple cute bear illustrations that I wanted to try out. Full disclaimer, these are just explorations. I also don't really 
condone the use of ChatGPT to kind of steal other artists' work because I love creating art myself, but it is a good place for me to see what's possible and have some starting options for my app. So all in all, here is the final branding look and some of the final screens that I really like. Again, this is like my favorite part of the design, obviously, because there's so much that goes into it. You really get to flex your creativity skills while also making sure that the product is usable and user-friendly and enjoyable to use. If I zoom out, this is what my Figma looks like before I go in and organize everything. It can get pretty chaotic at times, but whenever I'm in the middle of it, I like to keep going so that I don't lose the flow, so this is where it's at right now. So I'm gonna go change into some comfy clothes now so I can show you the final prototype and some final thoughts next. Okay, so we're back at my desk and I wanted to show you the final prototype. It's far from perfect, but I just wanted to show you what I have so far. For the Figma settings for animation, I usually just use Smart Animate with gentle and 0.4 milliseconds, and it kind of just knows what to do. Um, and if I need a very specific animation, you can go through the list and it'll probably have one. So this is just the clickable prototype. I also wanted to give a reminder that at every stage of designing, I made sure to get a lot of feedback from Christian, also show it to Arusha so that I'm not pigeonholed into my own thoughts, and make sure everything makes sense and looks good. Also, maybe I'll look at this design in a couple of weeks and say, wow, I think I'm gonna redesign the whole thing Thing, so who knows maybe by the time we develop it it looks completely different but i wanted to show the complete design so far and the thought process that i had while creating this what i love most about this project is that it combines everything so my engineering background helps me think practically and my design skills focus on making the ui aesthetic and my personal love for reading makes it more meaningful so if you're thinking about making a career change or getting into design or just starting any creative project in general i hope this shows you that you don't need to have everything figured out you just need to start make the bad versions and get feedback and iterate and most most importantly, enjoy the process because it's all about learning and improving at this point. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for joining me and watching my entire process. I finished my case study on this for my portfolio, so feel free to check that out if you want more details. And hopefully you learned something new or saw a new resource. Let me know in the comments if you have any more resources I can check out or if how your process might differ from mine and how I can improve my process because I'm always looking for ways to improve. Also, let me know if you like this kind of content. I'm still trying to figure out where I want to take this channel and figuring out what I want to share. So let me know what you want to see and I'll see you guys in the next one.